Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the DeHart House. My name is Alicia. I am the host of this crafty podcast coming to you from Tacoma, Washington in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. If you would like to follow me on other social media, you can find me on Instagram as Read Knit Run and on Ravelry as A Lady Knits Too. You can also follow the podcast and my shop at D Hard House on Instagram. And don't forget to join our group on Ravelry called the D Hard House Podcast Group, where we host knit alongs, make alongs, and I post show notes for every episode, including links to the things that I talk about here. So welcome if you're a new viewer. Thank you so much for trying out this podcast and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I honestly couldn't do this without you. It would be really awkward. So it is evening. It is Wednesday evening. Today is the 22nd of January. Oh my gosh. It's the 22nd of January. Like, when did that happen? This morning, that's when it happened at midnight. Yes, it is evening. It is about 5.45 p.m. here in Tacoma. Uh, so that would be Pacific time. You can see through my window right here, it is dark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got home from work uh, 45 minutes ago. I left work at... Let's see, about 3.30. So as I was uh, incredibly interrupted by my computer, which decided it needed to restart right this second. Isn't that how it always goes? Yeah. Right when you sit to down to do something important, the computer needs to restart oh. every time. I know. Uh, I am joined this evening by my four-legged co-host Marjorie, who is our black Labrador. Marjorie just finished eating her dinner and went outside and has come back in and now wants all the love and attention, don't you? And you're just off camera. You're always just out of sight. I know it. You're such a big dog, but you have a hard time getting in the camera. That's right. <laughs> we are down in the living room this evening. Uh, it is extremely dark outside. I'm pretty sure I already said that, but I'm going to say it again. It's extremely dark outside. And I decided uh, that I wanted to podcast this evening from the living room. And Marjorie, you should go get something to chew on while I'm podcasting. Yeah. Do you want to go get a chewy? Yeah, like a rawhide. It's laying right over there. She's probably going to grab something that squeaks. Not she's grabbing a chewy. Oh, good. A nice bone to chew on. Good, good girl. So, <laughs> uh, it gets dark very early and it's very sad. I barely get to see the sunlight anymore. I know, let's all cry about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, it is winter and such is life. So, are you going to keep interrupting me? We will muddle through somehow. Um, maybe this wasn't such a great idea. <laughs> we'll make it work. So, um, yes, it is Wednesday evening, January 22nd. And, uh, dang it. <sighs> she has missed me and she really wants all my attention. So this might not happen tonight. I'm going to try. 
Okay. <laughs> so, yes, it's been uh, really nice. So, uh, Monday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So, we had uh, no classes, which meant I had the day off. We had a really nice, um, long three-day weekend. Mike and I did uh, more exploring of some state parks, so I will put um, footage of that in at the end of the episode. Yes, it's very exciting. <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, so I will put in footage of that at the end of the episode if you're interested. Uh, Mike and I are going around uh, our area here in Washington and visiting various state parks and uh, taking Marjorie with us and just getting out and adventuring and it's really fun. So we did some of that this weekend. Yep. And I also got quite a bit of knitting done. So let me show you what I've been working on. So first to show you is uh, something I showed you last episode uh, that I'm still working on. This is from last week. And this is a pair of socks that I am designing. Uh, I'm knitting this pair in particular for my husband, Michael. And it still has this bit of a crease down the, down the middle that I'm trying to get to fall out. But uh, yeah, so they're just... Uh, like a plaid type of design. Sorry for the camera blowing out. They are pretty dark colors, but, um, oh yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm using, uh, this is Premier Yarns Serenity Sock Yarn. We've got black and, and, and green. I don't know if the green has a name other than green um but uh really nice yarn so i'm working these uh cuff down so you can see that i finished the first sock that's what i'm holding up here and i have cast on it's in a halloween bag which is totally not appropriate for january but hey whatever <laughs> so uh, i cast on the second sock and I got as far as the cuff. So, yes. I'm all set to join in uh, the green so I can do the color work. So, I've started it. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, working out really well. I think Michael is really going to like these. And yeah, I really hope to get these finished. Um, sooner rather than later. So that's that. Uh, the second thing I want to share with you is something that I forgot to show you last week. I told you I had just cast on this pair of socks uh, and left it down here. <laughs> and I was using it as my treadmill, min treadmill knitting. I haven't been on the treadmill like at all this week, so... This has been couch knitting, which is regular knitting, by the way. Couch knitting is regular knitting. <laughs> so uh, I cast on this pair of socks. And I'm like cruising on these things. So the yarn is, I bet I don't have the label. Of course I don't. So I'll put the color name up on the screen, but this is another um, Serenity Sock yarn. And when I saw it in the ball at the store, I really thought it was going to be uh, self-striping. And it's obviously not. <laughs> it is pooling, which is really cool. So... At first, I didn't think I would like it, but I think it actually looks pretty neat. I, I don't have socks at all like this. This is going to be really cool. 
Uh, anyway, so I'm working the uh, Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern, which is a free pattern available on Ravelry. It's a really simple um, knit and pearl texture type of design. I put in a short row heel, and now I'm working down the foot. So, yeah. They're really big. Uh, I wanted to make these tall and just... Because I have two balls of this yarn, and I just really like to use up as much as possible in these socks. So this is the first one, and I am using uh, US size 1 uh, knitting needles, which are 2.25 millimeter. I either use a US size 1 or a US size 0, uh, depending on who I'm knitting the sock for and what kind of gauge I want to have and the yarn that I'm working with and things like that. So uh, I'm using US size 1 for these socks and I have the uh, two 16 inch circulars. And these needles are, well, what are these needles? I believe they're Knitter's Pride. Boy, I'm really quizzing myself here. <laughs> Knitter's Pride. What are these called? I have the pack packaging upstairs in the craft room. Um, but yeah, these are uh, some of my oldie but goodie uh, knitting needles. I I bought these before I bought any of my Chow Goo needles. Uh, and I still very, very much love these. So... The two 16-inch uh, circular needle method is pretty much the magic loop method, but without the loop, which I find really nice, actually, <laughs> because sometimes the loop in magic loop is really fiddly. Just, it doesn't want to twist the right way, and as I'm working the stitches, it gets even more twisted out of whack, and... Right, so I do like Magic Loop, but every once in a while it just frustrates me. And I just want to use two needles instead of one. But yeah, so I've been just working away on this. This has been my super mindless knit um, to work on, hence me having so much progress. So last week, I didn't even show this to you because of two reasons. Number one, I left this downstairs and forgot about it. And number two, I only had like three rows of ribbing at the top and it wasn't really worth showing. So now I have much more and it looks really cool. So the reason that um, that sock has been my mindless knitting is because my previous mindless knitting has come to a screeching halt, like screeching halt. So, living in one of my sweater bags is a sweater that I've been sharing with you guys, and it's the Weekender by Andrea Mowry. And I have been cruising on this thing, just cruising. So, I took um, the stitches here. Sorry, just sorting out my needles. So I took the stitches and I put them on uh, two needles so that I could uh, try this on. Now it is knit bottom up, which is difficult to try on like properly, but I wanted to just get an idea of how big around this was and how long it was because I'm now to the point where I need to split for the sleeves. So I wanted to see um, if I put this tube on, essentially, uh, would it extend from under my arm down to the length where I'd like it to hit. So I put the stitches on two circular needles so I could spread the stitches out. And I tried it on. And... It's huge. It's ginormous. It's almost twice my body here. It's way too big. <laughs> so, 
I have two options. <clears throat> Option one, just make the sweater. Just as is, just huge. Just make it. Option two, rip it all out and start over and make a smaller size. And as much as I don't like ripping out my work and starting over, I think I'm going to do that. Because... Oh my gosh. Well, and <laughs> I mean, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, maybe I should try it on again. Maybe after this has been sitting in the bag for a little bit. Um, but I'll put in this picture right here that I took of uh, myself sort of trying this on and just how huge it looks on me. It's uh, not good. <laughs> so uh, I know my gauge was a little bit off, but I did not expect this. I also know the yarn has, um, it has alpaca in it, so it is pretty drapey and whatnot. So maybe, <clears throat> you know, when the sweater is finished, it will hang down more than stretch outward. I don't know. But uh, based on that picture and <laughs> me trying this on a few days ago, I just want to rip the whole thing out and start over, which is really sad because that tubular cast on was a pain. <laughs> like, it probably took me six tries just to get the tubular cast on down. So just redoing that doesn't sound super fun. So <clears throat> anyway, I haven't ripped it out yet because I wanted to show you guys that I was gonna start splitting for the sleeves and doing all the things. And then I realized it was, um, it had much more ease in it than I originally anticipated. So yeah, it's supposed to have 10 inches of positive ease, but it seems like it has more like 20 because uh, like 10 inches out plus 10 inches back. So I don't know about 20 inches of positive ease, but when um, Michael saw me trying this on and he was like, wow, that looks kind of big. Is it supposed to be kind of big? And I was like, not this big. It's supposed to be loose, but it's not supposed to be this loose. And he goes, well, you can always make it for me. <laughs> First of all, that is a compliment I'm taking it that way. Second of all, this would be really big on him too. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he's that much bigger than me, if, if at all bigger than me. I'd say we're about the same size. So it's like, <laughs> it would also be ginormous on him. So I don't know what I did wrong, but I'm going to figure out how to fix it. So. I'm going to be frogging this and starting over. I've decided that's what's going to happen. So yes, this came to a screeching halt. I can't even remember what day it was. It was over the weekend. And I didn't want to deal with it in the moment because I thought don't make rash decisions in the moment when you're upset. <laughs> Let it simmer on the back burner and think about it. That's why I just put it back in the bag and said, I will make a decision later. And uh, so that's when I picked up this, uh, this sock over here. And instead of knitting it while on the treadmill, I've just been knitting away on the couch, just trying to think like, do I rip this sweater out or do I not? What do I, what do I do? So yeah. I'm leaning towards ripping it out and it's really sad, but I want a sweater that will fit and look nice and <sighs> so be it. There goes two weeks of progress down the drain. Oh well. But yeah, so that's my knitting. I did a whole bunch of sweater knitting and it is going to go away and I will just get to do it again and experience the joy. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, 
I mentioned that I wanted to finish uh, one of my blankets this year, and so my buffalo check plaid blanket is on the couch right over here, and it has been living on the couch for a while. The, the thing is not finished, but we're totally using it in the meantime because it's a pretty good size, but uh, I sat down and put a few squares on it over the weekend. And then I realized that I was out of yarn. <laughs> so it has uh, white squares, light gray squares, and charcoal squares. And I'll put a, a picture up here on the screen. So because of the patterning, uh, the light gray is basically the main color. It's it's used um, more often than the than the others. And uh, twice as much as the charcoal and twice as much as the white. So anyway, I ran out of that light gray yarn. <laughs> I thought I had more in my stash. And so uh, I put three squares on this weekend. And then I'm to the point where I, I ha my only option is to put in a light gray square next. <laughs> and I couldn't find any more yarn. So I was like, well, I guess I have to go buy more yarn. And Michael's like, oh, darn. <laughs> I know. So I did. And um, I'll just show you. I've got it sitting right here. Oh, Marjorie has her ball. So I am using, here's the knitting needle I'm using actually on my blanket. Um, I have no idea. I'm assuming these are like Susan Boyle knitting needles, but uh, these were my great grandmother's uh, knitting needles. I have a whole bunch of um, <laughs> hand-me-downs from uh, Great Grandma Gray and Grandma D. Hart. And um, so anyway, I just, I really love that I'm using knitting needles that belong to my great grandmother. And honestly, this join is amazing. <laughs> when I first picked up these knitting needles, I did not think that they were gonna be that that good, especially since the uh, the plastic cable here has really remembered the shape so much. Uh, but the join is super smooth. The cable is bent perfectly to work well with everything. And I get to think about my great grandmother while I'm knitting with them. So it's nice. But they were stuck in the skein of yarn. So, <laughs> so I'm using Karen uh, yarn uh, for the light gray color. And I'm using Red Heart yarn for the charcoal and white. Uh, but this is... Uh, soft gray mix if I can show you the tag there soft gray mix and um, I just the previous uh, bit I did on the blanket I bought the one pound skein and uh, I couldn't really find this color in smaller skein so I said what the hey I'll just <laughs> I'll use it I'll probably make I'll definitely have yarn left over and, I don't know, make a pillow cover or something, and then it'll match the uh, the blanket on the couch, so no big deal. But, yeah, we went to uh, Joanne's this weekend <laughs> so I could pick this up, and uh, it was in a bin in uh, the middle of, like, the main aisle where you walk in the store. And they usually have things in these bins that are like clearance or, you know, markdown on sale. And so this was in one of those bins and there was no indication whatsoever that this was on sale. And I'm like, is this on sale? Is this, is this not on sale? <laughs> so we checked it was not on sale. However, I did have a 60% off one regular priced item coupon. So I did get this at 60% off. <laughs> oh, coupons are great. Anyway. Yep. So it's just a uh, worsted weight, 100% acrylic. Um, I uh, have been crafting since I was a kid and 
this is the yarn that I worked with as a kid. I started out crocheting. I really enjoyed making blankets. And I mean, this yarn doesn't feel plasticky. It doesn't squeak on the needles or anything like that. So it's, uh, it's nice. And especially for the blanket, like it's washable. I can put it in the washer and the dryer. I have a dog. Dog hair is a thing, right? Um, so yeah, that's what I'm using. So I had to buy more yarn. So I totally meant to put more squares on this weekend, but it didn't happen because <laughs> I surprisingly ran out. I mean, to run out of one pound of yarn is without even noticing is crazy. But yeah. Hello, Marjorie. So, um, <laughs> so that's what I've been working on. And, oh, um, I did dye up some yarn. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I did. I dyed up some self-striping yarn last night and it uh, spent the evening drying and uh, I go to work really early in the morning so I didn't have time to wind up the ball. So I will not show it to you on this episode, but I will share with you a new uh, colorway that I dyed up last night. So I'm going to wind it uh, up this evening probably while I'm editing this episode and I'll get some pictures up on Instagram definitely. <laughs> and I'll probably start knitting with it because, <laughs> oh my gosh, self-striping yarn is the best. Super addicting to knit with. So yeah, I will totally be sharing that with you next time. Uh, in the meantime, I have my state park adventures to talk about uh, and some uh, let's see, what else do I have to talk about? Marjorie's toy rolled underneath the couch, so I'm going to grab that for her and be right back. Now the adventuring part of the podcast where I talk about going out and adventuring the state of Washington uh, and all the beautiful things in the Pacific Northwest region. So uh, this is it for crafty content. So thank you for joining me thus far. And uh, if you don't wish to hear about state parks, then I will see you next week for the next episode. So this past weekend, Michael and I went out to Rainbow Falls State Park. And the name would suggest that there are waterfalls and that they're beautiful. And you would be wrong. <laughs> Which is so weird. So first of all, um, so I'm going to consult my Washington State Park brochure here. Uh, first of all, it was still beautiful. <laughs> but there was no waterfall. Like, I thought, waterfall, right? Rainbow Falls. Open up brochure. Come on. Here we go. So I have the very large chart here with all the parks uh, with camping and without. So we've got, here we go. Rainbow Falls does offer camping. Is there camping there? There was camping there. Wow. <laughs> this was only like three days ago that we went here. <laughs> so uh, it is 17 miles west of Chehalis on State Road 6. So I'll put in a little um, map here to show you where the state park is located. Uh, so it does have, um, it. so the Washington state parks are using this very interesting lettering system on the campsites to denote whether or not the campsite is like basic quality or premium quality and whether or not that it has utilities like electricity and water at the campsite. So um, this campground did have um, what looked like the the whole range of possibilities. Like there were 
campsites available for people to hike into or bike into. These are people who are not uh, driving to the campground. You're like on a backpacking trip or a you know, cross-country biking trip, and so that's how you're coming into the campground. So they had a few of those. There were also some really basic just tent sites all the way up to sites where you can park your RV, plug in to electric and water. So um, it had all of those. And I'm trying to see here all the things. It boasts bird watching, ball fields. It did have a very nice open area where you could have um, like a family reunion. I mean, it was huge. It was a really nice outdoor uh, cooking area with picnic tables and just this huge field that you could just play in. It was, it was nice. Uh, let's see, fishing. Fishing is on here and scuba diving and playground equipment, hiking, mountain biking, and yes, equestrian. There were um, play their campsites there available for people coming in by horse. So there were places to uh, tie up your horse and campsites where you could have your horse with you at the campground. So that was neat. Uh, so it boasts a self-guided interpretive trail, two miles of moderately difficult hiking trails, and two equestrian campsites. So, see that? Nothing about waterfalls on there. Nothing. <laughs> so I just assumed from the name that there would be waterfalls, and I was, I was totally wrong. Uh... So the, the park is on the river. It's on the uh, Chehalis River, I believe. And it was really pretty. Uh, we went on, I believe it was Sunday. Yes, it was Sunday. Uh, we were looking for a break in the weather because we've had lots of snow and rain. And so we were looking for a day that <laughs> would be free of those two things. And Sunday was spot on perfect. Not a drop of rain while we were out exploring. Rain on the drive home, which is totally fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the sun was out and everything was gorgeous. So I'll put in a little video here of, of the river and what we found at Rainbow Falls State Park. Look out. Coming through. But the falls are further down though. Oh, that's pretty. Uh oh.
Empire Tree. Be good. Oh my. Yeah, so it, like I said, really nice um, outdoor cooking pavilion kitchen area uh, with a stove and sinks uh, and nice picnic tables and like this huge field, like I said, that you could just do whatever in. Um, and then the river is not too far by. So as far as a place to go hiking, there wasn't really much of that. Like... There was nice walking along the river, but it wasn't very far, and it wasn't very difficult. It was just kind of there. So uh, we were hoping we'd be going out to a place with more, like, getting out away from the big uh, communal area and being able to go off into the woods and and uh, go on a hiking trail, but that is not what this park offers. So it is a really nice place. Um, in my opinion, it would be a nice place to have uh, some kind of family gathering where you're coming in and, and you're camping and you're, you're having a nice uh, cookout together. You're, you're wanting to get out and explore Washington. I think this would be a pretty good place to set up um, a base camp uh, for that. So what was neat uh, is that we, while we were walking around, uh, oh, Marjorie, just chill for a minute. Just chill. Can you hang on? I'm almost finished. So while we were uh, hiking along, there was a sign that told us um, that there was a, um, a much longer trail uh, right outside of the campground. And this longer trail would pretty much take you all the way to the coast, uh, like 20, 30 miles down the road, uh, without hiking on the road. It's on one of the, um, old railroad tracks that they've converted into a trail. Uh, and so we did, we walked out of the campground and we got on this, uh, this rails to trail type of trail and uh and yeah it just went so that got us thinking oh i wonder what this would be like to hike along so we went back and read the sign and we were hoping for like another campground down the way uh and there there isn't uh, this is the only campground on that trail so that was kind of disappointing but still really neat we did see uh people riding their four-wheelers on that uh, rails to trail trail. We saw a couple of gentlemen walking with their fishing gear along that, because uh, it does just follow the river qu for quite a ways. Uh, so they were walking along there with their fishing gear. So it does look like people are using that trail, which uh, was really nice to see. I will get your toy in just a minute. <laughs> She doesn't want to wait. Um, anyway, so it was nice to get out and explore, especially after being cooped up inside with uh, all the snow days and then all the rain that followed the snow. Uh, so it was just uh, nice to take a day. It was, um, I think, about an hour drive 
to get out there from where we're living. And then it took a little bit longer to get back because we did follow the road um, out a bit further. So we ventured down to see what was further down the rails to trail uh, before coming home. So, but it was really nice. So a uh, nice place to go uh, camping with a big group of people. Uh, not so much to offer in the way of hiking. And that's my opinion on that. So folks, I am going to sign off for the evening. Marjorie really wants to play with her ball. So I am going to do that. Yes, I promise. She just looked up at me like, really, are you going to? Here, say hi. Marjorie, do you want to say hi? Hello. Hello, say hi. Over here. No, look, what if I offer you a cashew? Look at it. Okay, folks, I'm going to sign off for the evening. I have Marjorie's full attention as I'm holding a cashew in my hand. I know it. <laughs> uh, so I hope you have a wonderful week. And until I see you next time, happy crafting.